Welcome, Sim Captains, to episode three of the Flight Brothers FT podcast. This podcast is recorded on June 24th, 2020. In this episode, a four engined regional jet, peripherals for Airbus, turboprops, and free pistons. And finally, AFM, TorxSim, and the SSG 748 have updates. In our previous podcast, recorded on May 26th, we discussed Air Hauler 2's release. The SSG 747-800 freighter and V2.2 update, FlyJ Sim support website, and the TorxSim SR22 project and Islander 1.01 update. If you are a listener or subscriber, make sure to click like, subscribe if you haven't, and ring the bell for all of our notifications. Are you interested in supporting the podcast or this YouTube channel? Contact us at flightbrosft at gmail.com and to follow us on social media go to facebook.com slash flight brothers ft flight ft 2019 on instagram and at flight ft on twitter so welcome to episode three some of the upcoming product announcements we have are the just flight bae 146 for x-plane 11 there's a full article at fselite.net which you can check out to find out more and that is a uh, X-Plane 11 version. It's already out, or I'm sorry, it's in development, I think, Tim, there for P3D and uh, for V4 and V5 on that. Ah, all right. Yeah. Um, how are you feeling about that? You and I were talking about that, and uh, it's kind of a cool jet. Absolutely. London City, here I come. <laughs> right. That would be our four-engined uh, four regional jet there. And uh, jar design... I guess they kind of teased that they had some a co-pilot mod, which they've recently released. And guys, all of these articles are going to be in the video description below if you want more information on it, so feel free to click there. But they're teasing something for the Zebo, and you're well aware you've got way more hours than I do. Um, how do you feel about having an incredibly immersive and detailed sim aircraft so complex you need help to fly it? You know, one of the weird things from the CRM or crew resource management standpoint is in the sim world, it doesn't exist. So it's actually weird. Uh, you are, Lee, my most frequent co-pilot in the sim. Sure. So uh, one of the things we always have to do is who's going to do what. And some of that is confounded by, well, who has the mouse? Who has the joystick? who has the right. peripherals to actually run it. So um, I think it's exciting. It's just, it's so unknown. Like, wow, what is that going to look like? I'm really curious. I, I can't wait to see what it's going to be. And I did skim that article for the A321. I guess they recently, on June 11th, uh, released it for the TOLUS uh, A321. And Linda is the co-pilot's name. And I guess they have a demo version as well. And I think it'll run through everything from what I would imagine would be your initial power on up until it stops either at taxi or at takeoff. I don't remember. And that's so, the, the demo. So it's a time limited demo. Yeah. And I believe I read that in that A321 article. So if you guys are interested, go check that out. There'll be more information there. The, uh, they were just teasing it for the Zebo. I believe it was not confirmed, but Excellent. Uh, they, they, yeah, they did show a picture of it there. You know, personally, if I was going to name the co-pilot, I wouldn't have gone with Linda. I would have gone with Shirley. But as long as you don't call me Shirley. <laughs> All right. So in uh, uh, in the other upcoming uh, rotate, well known for their Mad Dog eighty is coming out with an MD-11, and they have given some shots of the landing gear. So that's something to check out, particularly if you're into the more classics. Although, uh, I, I don't know that we can really call the MD-11 a classic. If it was a DC-10, I would call it a classic jetliner. Uh, the MD-11, you're going to get much more modern avionics, but of course the airframe and the engines still functionally a DC-10. Sure, and MD-11s are still flying i don't know how many tens are flying around but mm, you know most of them have been yeah most of them have been relegated to the cargo routes now right we still those, get them here sure and those were uh, it, well actually you recently picked up the uh 
rotate MD11 or uh, sorry, MD80. MD80. How? Yeah, and how? Uh, how is that? I've never flown a rotate product. It looks really nice. Well, so, uh, just for anyone listening to this, uh, if if you're up on the X Plane store and you're listening to this about the time we release it, there was recently uh, an anniversary sale. It was a flash sale for numerous days. And the way they did mm-hmm. the flash sale was for a, f- a few hours, two to three hours, a product would be on their specials for half price. And it was addictive. I I was on all day, every day, looking at these. And no matter how... <laughs> the problem is, if you pass up on something, you're like, but it was half price. I can... I mean, you just can't... Oh, it's torture. So everything mm-hmm. I had been holding off on, like the MD-80... Uh, it was time to buy it. So I bought, gosh, one, two, three, four, five, five or six aircraft. And uh, the MD-80 was one of them. So I've only played with it once. I opened it up and I just said, let's see if I can take my default laminar checklist mm-hmm. and, and get going. I could not. <laughs> so really, um, I need to get into the manuals and that's fine. That's kind of, I'll be honest, I think I might have been a little disappointed if I could have gotten going with just my default so uh so i need to get into it but it seems like a quality product and we've certainly heard nothing but good things about it so uh i'll tell you more in our next podcast yeah for sure well that hits up the product announcements i guess in episode three here let's move to the product releases and this one uh, the the first one we're going to start off with the thrustmaster tca side uh side stick Airbus edition. <laughs> now, this functionally, the, the joystick looked like yours, Tim. That because my, mine is the Thrustmaster, right? It is it, right. it is my joystick, but it looks like yeah. it came out of an Airbus. <laughs> right, yeah, it's it's great. But uh, yeah, that released, well, actually today as we're recording this. Um, for, Sold out, if I What is that, that's a $100 retail? Whew. All right. Yeah, I think they said it sold out like instantly. And uh, is the is the throttle quadrant separate, or that's yeah the included? the throttle quadrant is separate. Um, looks like according to their release, again these links are down below, guys. The uh, it lo- looks like they're shooting for September on that, and that's going to be I'm imagining that's an additional one hundred and fifty nine dollars. Mm. Um, if the release is accurate, and also they have the. This is kind of a phased approach. They're releasing the the flight stick, and then I think after that is going to be the quadrant. Then, in case you don't have enough desk space, they're releasing a flying clamp that basically clamps to your desk and it gives you a shelf to put the stuff in. They, and they then think of everything. That, <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a, a full-on kit. And then after that, they're actually going to have the... Uh, flap parking brake spoiler modules that are going to sit on either side of your throttle quads. Uh, that pricing was not available, uh, as was the uh, the flying clamp. That pricing was not available for that either. So if you're an Airbus pilot, I think Christmas is on its way. C- can I give a two-second aside? I-, I have a confession to make, a hmm. flight sim confession. I have not flown a single Airbus in the sim since probably X plane seven. Really? Right. So when this came out, I mean, it looks great, but it's like, wow, I, I literally have no use for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I do have that flight factor a three twenty. So uh, maybe right. the next time we get together, you can take that thing. For and, a spin. and tell us Lee, how many times have you flown it? <laughs> I've got, I've got about two or three flights in it and um it's i just I, derelict I in the hangar <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's it, not unlike many airbuses uh today that are sitting on the ground right for different, different reasons you can't blame yours on covid all right well that's well that's, that's the true. side topic why tim and lee don't fly <laughs> airbus products it's nothing personal no it's really it's just time and learning the uh how the systems work you know and that fmgc is just different enough from a, a Boeing logic and then right. they've got the push poles on the, uh, what do you call it? The, the glare shield, you know? So yeah, it's, it's, it's a whole new world, but Hey, if you're in the real one, the flight deck is a lot more roomy than a Boeing, uh, 737 NG by far. 
Yeah, you can eat your lunch right in your lap. I mean, you got space for miles, so because uh, it doesn't taper down. All right, so the next one, I, I, I want to do this one because okay. this one I'm excited about. Carinado, Take it away. PA Malibu, sorry, PA46, Malibu Meridian with the G1000 inside. It's mm-hmm. uh, VR ready. It has PBR for the exterior. The, the I, I get, I get, I hear it from people when I say this wrong. Librain? Librain? Sure, go go with Librain. <laughs> I'm gonna say it like Borat. <laughs> yeah, you know why not? Um, people are gonna pick on us. You know, just it's, go. It's the in. thing that makes the windshield look wet. For those of you who really dig that thing, right? There you go. <laughs> it also not that has, we don't. Right now, the next thing in the list is the one I care about. So I, I'm, I'm teasing you, rain people, but this is the one I care about. It has F mod because I'm a sound geek, not a rain geek. Uh, mm-hmm. it, for for those of you who don't know this, Flight Brothers is based out of Phoenix. We 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 hardly even know what rain is. Okay, so forgive us. Right. It, it it's not that we don't fly with real weather. It's that most of the time when we fly out here, the real weather doesn't have rain. Right. <laughs> so being the weather caster in Phoenix is the least demanding job in the world. Hot That's and true. It's going to be hot and dry. Here's the 365-day forecast, hot, dry, and sunny. There you go. Case closed. Yep. Uh, it also has the G1000, which is based on the default X-Plane 11 G1000. So if you know how to use that, this this should not be that different. Uh, but I'm just really excited. I've really, this uh, this year, spent a lot of time in the Carinado PC-12. And um, is the uh, Malibu Meridian powered by a PT-6 uh, turboprop? Yep. Okay, so. Yeah, I believe that's so. I, I'm I'm imagining this being very comparable in feel to the Pilatus or the TBM, and so I'm I'm excited by this. Uh, I, I think it's just a beautiful aircraft. It's it's one of those I dream of having one in the real world. That would just be sweet. Yeah, there there is something about those that they just look right. You know the the proportions. I think the TBM's got a little little longer snoot on it, a little mm-hmm. shorter tail. Um, you know the proportions are just a little different, but like the the Pilatus and and the Malibu Meridian, man, they just look, they just look the way they should. Right, it's just just perfect. All right, so uh, you want you want to... me to take the next? one? I, there? I do because you you've actually played this one, right? Yeah, that's right. This was one of the. I'd say it's a pretty cool release if you haven't if you haven't gotten a uh, SR twenty two. Hold My Beer has released theirs as a freeware. It's based on the Turbo G6 model. And I went and downloaded this a couple of days after, I don't know, the news came out that they were releasing it. I think originally it was going to be a payware. And I've got to say it's a lot of fun. I know yeah, you said you hadn't picked it up yet, Tim. Um, right, just it was I'm swamped in new aircraft. Well, well, it's a good yeah, problem to have, really. Fantastic. It is, it is. Um. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of details. So far, I've only done one flight. I think I took off um, out of the airport near my house here and kind of did a lap of Phoenix and came back. But there was a lot of little details I noticed. Um, You see here on our sheet, it actually has, like when it started, you actually have to pick the key out of the armrest. You have to (laughs) click on it, and then it goes into the ignition. Where's, and, where's my keys <laughs> right yeah and then I, I wish I had sent you some pictures I don't think I did or screenshots but the aircraft starts it's got all the um, remove before flight stuff it's got a canopy over the whole thing so as you're sitting in the aircraft when it when you get into it when X-Plane boots you can't see out of it because it's got the cover on oh nice yeah so you have to take the sun cover off and, and all that stuff um you know, Cirrus is, uh, I believe, known for their power lever. They don't have a throttle, per se, but the power level lever, excuse me, controls both the uh, power output of the engine and the pitch together. So it's it's one motion. Um, so when you're sitting there on the ground and you, and you move the, the throttle on it, you can actually see the pitch change on it. And there's a, a Bose A20 sitting in the seat next to you that you can, uh, when you click it. It attenuates the in cockpit noise. That's wonderful, right? And uh, it also has a tablet. I don't think it was Avatab, but it has a ta- tablet. And if I remember right, you can pull up your um, you can pull up your Navigraph data, 
it has some weather products and some like maintenance tabs and stuff for the aircraft. It's really neat. It, it's like a, it's literally like an EFB for uh, that plane. That's uh, that's great because you don't find that many in the GA realm that have that. Yeah, for, for sure. I mean, like I say, that one flight, if you had to say, yeah, I mean, let's remember this is free. But if you had to gripe at anything, it just comes with a single livery, which I'm sure, you know. They're, they're <laughs> that won't be, last, yeah. It, yeah, exactly. And I noticed it. it's... Um, it's shiny from the exterior, but I don't think you get that uh, that HDR. Like it, it doesn't quite have that the, uh, the, vibrant the PBR? appearance. Or yeah, yeah, the PBR. Yeah. So, um, but it it looks good just from the exterior. the The shine looks a little flat. It's kind of like having gloss paint versus you know like a pearl metallic or something like that. All right. So, well, it, but it again, for quite have free the wear, you know, sure. I am. Am I the king of garbage free wear, guilty pleasure aircraft? I mean, I, <laughs> I have some really weird kind of things I wouldn't recommend to anyone, but I like aircraft in my hangar. Um, this one's way above most of your standards. <laughs> you're like, I've seen your hangar. This is better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this won't bring the value down. My problem. So that's the. I was one. That's the whole my beer. Nice. Sorry, sorry. No, that's great. Um, gotta love that developer name. That that's that one's gonna stick. So yeah, I wonder uh, how that came up. You probably know a little bit more about this next one. Thranda, who did you the Kodiak you have, has a PC six. Uh, it says here S T O L short takeoff and landing. Is that a special yep. thing for the sim, or that's just something this aircraft is naturally capable of in the real world? Yeah, it's just capable of that. It's the actually, I believe, wasn't this in Goldeneye in the opening scene? Is that what that was? I was literally watching that uh, with my kid yesterday and thinking. I wonder what that is. It's definitely not Russian. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe it's actually a PC-6, you know, that goes off the end there and James Bond uh, dives down to catch it. Uh, I just Googled but, Pilatus PC-6, and I'm going to say I think so. Right, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they threatened to release that. Um, of course, it has the PBR F-Mod sounds as well. Um, you, you'll get the angle of attack. The wind changing, you get prop pitch sounds. Apparently, a lot of work has gone into that. Um, it, it also has uh, multiple avionics uh, support systems. So, if you have the Reality XP uh, GTN 750 or the GNS 430 and 530, you can use that. Comes with 12 liveries, and much like the Kodiak that I have. You can do that custom livery and the custom tail numbers, which mm. is a feature I don't know why almost everyone doesn't have at this point. Oh my gosh, I need that for one of my planes right now. Right. How many tail numbers do you think are you know on VATSIM that match, especially if they're Zebos? Right. Well, no, uh, what I want it for is I have, uh, I recently got that Carinado V-Tail Bonanza, which as you know, that was the... Uh, oh, yeah my grandfather's plane through the 1970s and i really 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 want to put his registration on it but i don't uh i don't make my own liveries and i'm kind of lazy about trying to figure that out so a feature like that bam i would love it good stuff would you mind taking the next one there sir i think you've done most of All the right. research yeah, absolutely. on that one so um i don't have too much information on this other than i've been seeing the posts from matt davies who is the uh, creator and leader of project fly and project fly is just i believe they're in the process of rolling out their version 4 release uh, as we speak and uh, I don't know that much about what new features they're putting in and how the interface is changing, but I'm really looking forward to seeing it. I've been using Project Fly extensively through the last year. And uh, I mean, it's a, it's a very clean looking interface. I think they've got a very good product. Uh, the only thing that gives you some pause is their, um, you know, their, the, since it's a freeware thing that they're doing and they put a lot of work into it, um, they're always looking for money to keep the servers up and everything. And 
I always have this deep fear that like I don't want to lose my data if you guys can't pay the bills next month. So that's just a concern I always have. So uh, I'm like the only person on the planet who wishes Project Fly was freeware, but it's not. So it's free and they've got a new version rolling out as we record. So I think that and wraps up that section there. Yeah, man. Uh, want to hit news there? Do you want to take this? Because pre-orders are done. All right. So the FS Elite Magazine 3rd Edition, and if you're wondering why it's only a 3rd edition, this is an annual magazine. It usually comes out with the uh, Flight Sim Expo. Unfortunately, due to COVID this year, Flight Sim Expo is not happening, which really Boo. is crushing Lee and I because uh, that would have been what, last weekend, right? Um, yeah, something like the 12th, I think, 13th. Yeah, and we yeah, are two sad dudes because uh, Lee had booked time off work and we were all set to ditch the kids and families and drive up to Vegas and just flight sim geek with all of you fine folks for a while and uh, not to be this year. But the FS Elite magazine, third edition, is still being released. And so uh, the third issue is supposed to be packed with a, a lot of original content and it's not going to be specific to this moment so it's not like well that was only applicable this week in flight sim no you should be able to enjoy it for quite a while uh there's going to be tips in there for perfecting your landing skills different uh other tips and tricks for simming community interviews interviews with real world pilots and youtubers as well as we're some, not in uh, there guys yeah except for us actually <laughs> yeah. my picture's in there i don't think lee's picture made it in there uh, no, I think I have a picture of an airplane, but our interview is not in there. We're going to have to talk to somebody about that. <laughs> well, our interview with FS Elite is available. So if you guys want it, it's uh, welcome Tim and Lee to the uh, FS Elite on uh, YouTube. You can find us there. But, oh, yeah, uh, good call. Yeah, there's going to be some other interviews with developers like Orbix, uh, Virtual Fly. So, you know, uh, FS Elite, uh, if you're not aware of this, we are contributing – uh, we're content creators for them. It's an unpaid thing. We're just really helping out. But one of the awesome things is we get to see how much uh, – it's a lot of great people, and they've got their fingers in a lot of pies, and they're really all working behind the scenes to bring you a lot of good content and information and just stay at the forefront of what's going on in Flight Sim. So it's it's just been kind of cool for us to be on the sidelines and just seeing how much is going on because uh, our, our specialty is really just – X plane, that's it, <laughs> and they do it all. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of uh, P3D, and well, I don't think so much FSX, but more the P3D stuff. And uh, of course, with Microsoft 2020 buzzing, you know, there are a lot of people are working on that as the alpha. I don't think it's reached beta. I, you, you might correct me if I'm wrong there, Tim. But I, I don't really pay attention to it. I, I, I know there's a lot of buzz, but I'm gonna wait until it's out and. People are all excited and then get in because, you know, pretty invested in yep. X-Plane at the moment. But yeah, uh, fair enough. if you're interested in that FS Elite magazine, there will be a link below. Uh, it was on pre-order right now. It's probably just regular order. And uh, if, if enough people want them, I think they're just going to burn another copy of them out. So so what uh, what do we have here next? I see something for the SSG on the list. Yeah, this is going to show up a couple times. SSG has rolled out their bug tracker on the xplane.org forums. Uh, they've got a list there of their their priorities. They've got it broken down into high, medium, and lower priorities mm -hmm. just so all of us customers or maybe potential customers can kind of see what's going on, what's being worked. Uh, we'll get to possibly something else on this later. But yeah, yeah, definitely want to talk about that later. Uh, yeah, for sure. Cool things so, to work with SSG and us people. So we'll uh, we'll talk about that later. Right, right. So if you have the SSG or are looking for the SSG 747-800 Intercontinental slash freighter, uh, again that link will be down below, and they've got their bug tracker working over there. What do I got next? Installing the rep. Dun dun um, dun. <laughs> yeah. So. We get a lot of, uh, what are those alerts we get, Tim, about daily, and then we kind of get a weekly summary, right, almost from 
theexplain.org. Right. Or, right. So yeah, we're, we're on Facebook and we're on theexplain.org and we get these summary things. And the number of times that people ask or claim that their rep is just mutilated and not going to work and blah. Um, and believe it or not, the answer is almost always the same as how to fix it. So you, you can go read the article. The link will be below. But do, do you want to spoiler alert this? Because it's, it's a very simple answer. Um, yeah. The key is if you, whatever aircraft you get the SIM coders rep for, install the rep last. That's it, guys. Last. Last, last. Right. So, it's the last <laughs> thing. Uh, you know, if you get a... What do they have? A Carinado PC-12. Uh, is it PC-12? Is that what you got? Uh, I have the rep on the uh, the default Cessna. Right. But oh, yeah, you can yeah, get yeah. it for the Baron. You can get it for the PC-12. I mean, they've got it for quite a few of the GAs. And if you guys don't know right. what that is, it's Reality Expansion Pack. And I actually, just from the one I have, I'm going to say I would highly recommend any of the reps. They seem like they're really, really well done. So if you have an aircraft you like and you see there's a rep for it, just imagine liking it twice as much because it really adds that much more realism to the procedures you're going to do. And I think you're really going to dig it. But the trick is... Don't install the rep and then start trying to do custom things. So, for example, with the Cessna I have, uh, there's a uh, optional bush kit you can get for free. Uh, do, you, do you remember what developer released Prop that? Prop Strike Studios. Prop Strike Studios bush kit. Now, if yep. you want to do that bush kit, you're going to want to actually read the directions. But it basically boils down to you'll make a separate folder, you'll install the bush kit, and then, and then, and only after then... <laughs> You put the mm -hmm. rep on top, and it all works fine. Do it in any other order, and you'll be the people on our uh, news feed. Why doesn't right. my rep work? And this answer will be out there. So uh, there you go. All right. Uh, all right, Tim. We have reached updates. This is the one. Updates. This is the good one. Yep. Okay. So as many of you know and perhaps you've listened to the previous month's podcast ssg that's the second or third time maybe this podcast we've mentioned them they have uh v2.2 beta screenshots up we have more of those posted and of course that will be the v2.2 is for the passenger version and the freighter version when it launches so those are available at the link on the x-plane forums and they're almost rolling out, what would you say, about every week to week and a half, we're getting a new batch of uh, photos. Um, you know, I haven't been looking at the photos because I've been making my own. Right. So, yeah. Check our Instagram. Uh, are, are we going to talk more about this later or is this when we're yeah. talking about this? Yeah, no, let's, let's kick that down to uh, toward the bottom. I'm dying to talk about SSG. So, all right, stay till the Let's end, everybody. Rolling. All right, next. All right, you, yeah, we'll you do come this back one, to that. Because I don't know. All right, so the Advanced Flight Modeling AFM M20, if you have that, they have released a version 4.00 PB5 update. I don't know what that is because I don't have it. Although, Tim, this is the uh, Mooney I've been eyeballing for quite a while. Oh, um, okay. So, so this is just to bring it up. To, to work with Vulcan, and so they just stayed ahead yep. of everything. Okay. Yep, exactly. So if you have that, um, you can get it updated for Vulcan and Metal. I'm unfamiliar with Metal, but uh, quite honestly, if you care and know what Metal is, uh, this this changes for you. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, I'm in the same boat. I don't know what Metal is either. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's a thing that bends and stuff. Okay, so... Uh, Torque Sim uh, back again this month with the Pocket Rocket update, uh, version 1.1.1. 1. 1. 1. Uh, again, that brings Vulcan and Metal compatibility as well. So if you have the Pocket Rocket, your update is out there. And Torque Sim Islander, again, this was, I think they were at 1.01 .01 last month, and they have now gone to 1.10. 1. Nice. There is a mega list. So if you have it, feel free to uh, click on our link and take a look at it. We've got... There's like 20 things here. Ooh, actually, is that right? Well, if you include the yeah. bug fixes, it's at least 20. 
Um, there's seven new features and improvements, and we'll just hit on one or two of those. Uh, the They've integrated the Reality XP um, GTN 750 and 650 there, and uh, integrated Avatab. I think those are the big ones that I see. And more FMOD. Everybody likes yep. sound. I like sound. You should like there, sound. There you go. Everybody yeah, must like sound. sound. I need more cowbell. <laughs> Here, this, this might crack you up, because if you've listened this far, you just probably like hanging out with us. Uh, when when we send our videos in to FS Elite, I can't tell you how many times I have to take it back and turn the engine sounds down because it's too loud for other people, but it wasn't loud enough for me. <laughs> yeah, that's a fact. More sound. More cowbell, man. Always more cowbell. Yep. I'm going to have hearing damage. Um, All right. So, well, scrolling down there, did we hit everything on that one? Um, I just want to mention they've got 40 bug fixes listed in this uh, in this 1.1 so uh, yeah I think that pretty much takes care of that one we can move to the next one there nice uh, righty uh, so rotate MD11 we're going to have some uh, gear photos we kind of talked about that a little bit earlier that MD11 is in development and uh, you know you always get these photos because there's just so much modeling that goes into making an aircraft and the MD11 that is a wide body jet. I mean, so we're talking three to four times the amount of uh, square footage to be modeled. So they got a lot of work to do there. And the gear is obviously one of the more complex and intricate parts that you get to see. Uh, that's not just a wing and tubes. And, yeah, especially with that one too, because it's got the middle gear, remember? Oh, right. Oh, wow. Okay, I need to go open up these pictures now because... You haven't looked at them? terrible that's the type I, of quality I read your you list, get with but us. i haven't looked at it yet <laughs> checking it well out. there you go they're not just for our listeners and subscribers they're for uh... bam but yeah they... so what do you think of those uh sadly i clicked the link and it sent me to comments i'm on page 51 of comments that's <laughs> uh, uh oh did i get us a bad link oh no i just had to scroll down i found it okay looking good oh nice very nice actually i know these photos are for the gear i'm more impressed with the skin texturing on the uh actual fuselage because on the belly there right it has that look of like the smaller panels it looks Mm -hmm. like aircraft skin you know what i mean it doesn't look like it's just a tube that they painted some lines on it really it's very convincing uh, sure. And the gear is pretty. Tires look nice. It's got all the little hydraulic brake lines and everything. Yeah, that center gear. That's such a goofy thing. I like it. Good stuff. <laughs> Good stuff. Planes are getting boring now. They're all, I mean, seriously, most modern aircraft, they all have the same shadow. They're just different sizes. So. You know, well, you, uh, you can't argue with the laws of nature, sir. I know, I know, I know. But Air moves a certain way around everything, right? But from from an aesthetic standpoint, true. the historical stuff, just there's some cool things. Yeah, for sure. All right, so tell well, me about the next one, because you know, you know how much we love Airbus, so tell me about this Flight Factor. Yeah, we're going to wrap up our update section here with the Flight Factor A350 update. And they are, let's see, what is this? Oh, they're about to release version one. So I guess they've been working on a 0.9, uh, an early release version. And this is going to focus on the ability to use SIDS and STARS and, uh, and additional improvements in the flight management and guidance system. Uh, or that would be like FMC, CDU for you Boeing types. Right. Um, <laughs> So it is a uh, it is a work in, in progress, of course, but that update is coming. And if I recall, they're offering it at a discounted price right now. I think it's high 40s, and I believe it's going to go up when it reaches uh, version 1. Okay, so, so it's kind of... Uh, you know, we've seen a lot of that sort of thing lately with well, developers we, we kind with, of early releasing yeah. at a lower price. Sure, sure. I mean... Kind of works, right? Let you gauge the market. I mean, we did it with uh, Concord. I I understand it. It doesn't trouble me, but it seems like there's a lot of people who 
really can't handle it. <laughs> yeah, it's it, there's definitely a line in the sand for sure. It's uh, it's very interesting. It's very interesting, but uh, whatever. Flight Sim's a niche market. They got to do what they got to do to get the uh, development they uh, they need. And yeah, Flight Factor's got a good reputation. Um, right. Granted, we really wish their 777 actually got updated to be as good as their uh, 757, 767, but those mm-hmm. products are solid. So uh, good stuff. And, and even their Airbus, in the limited time I've flown the A320, it's still a nice product. Looks and feels good, you know? Five minutes, Lee looked at it. Looked all right. <laughs> all right. Hey, man, I did... I did fly it once or twice. So <laughs> so that sums up all the news release, Tim, in uh, episode three here. Oh, um, thank goodness, because I've been waiting to talk this whole time. <laughs> I, I know you've been biding your time. I think this is the most I've spoke uh, continuously on a podcast. So it's killing um, me. let's tell everyone what we've been up to here. Oh, you first. Once I start, there'll be no end. Well, you, you want to talk about the FS Elite video? Oh, boo. that was kind of your baby, uh, right? Which, oh, oh well, yeah, the uh, F Mutt. Uh, we yeah, did yeah. the Inabuild 747 sound enhancement pack for the GE sixes, and because mm-hmm. I'm a goober, I made most of the B-roll shots of a um, British Airways Speedbird that was badged for Rolls Royce, even though they're obviously General Electrics. But that's okay. Uh, the F Mod did really improve the experience, and the developer mm-hmm. even chimed in in the uh, comments to the video. And by the way, it's not posted on the Flight Brothers channel. That's on the FS Elite YouTube channel. Uh, right. Just kind of commented that they they made that F Mod kind of as a learning project for themselves to do things so he kind of said you know if we were to do that today it would be a lot better especially on the exterior sounds and uh i don't know wouldn't you agree with that that like the inside was great but the exterior sound was like better than the default but definitely not as good as most payware so yeah absolutely and i think that was the main question we were trying to answer we were kind of floating it i think last month as well the can 12 bucks make you fly the the default 747 so if you want a little more on that guys head over to uh fs elite um fs elite.net or their youtube channel and uh check out our video over there is it called in a builds f mod tim is that what we called it i believe so but uh you'll find it it won't be it won't be too too challenging to find they don't have an enormous inventory of uh youtube videos quite yet so um so air hauler 2 lee let's talk about that because that's something you and i have both been in on right so both of us have gotten more time with it i'm enjoying it i'm kind of running two airlines a smaller specifically more ga one and then a uh a, a different one with a little bit heavier metal um i'm really just trying to run it and build up revenue at this point Right, um, but you've got your hands on it, so I, I don't remember if you watched right my now. video. <laughs> Are you okay? I watched your video, but yeah. I had trouble reading it because of my uh, my screen resolution versus yours, and so uh, I was also baby tending at the time. So True. I, I know I had bugged Lee with questions. He's like, "Those were in the video," and I'm like, oh, "Sorry," <laughs> but. Um, but I also hadn't played with it yet, so I think if I went back and watched it now, I would know exactly what you were talking about, even right. if I can't always read it. But uh, yeah, I'm actually checking my air hauler now on another tab because four of them need a new job. But uh, it's great if um, if you like. I- I've only been doing cargo ops. I don't know, Lee, if you've been doing passenger ops or not. But I'm running both. Uh. I- I'm just having a fantastic time. I recently this year was having a blast flying through the Caribbean. So I based my little group in the Caribbean and I started just buying up some of my favorite GA planes. And uh, Mm -hmm. actually the PC-12, the PC-12, that thing is versatile. I mean, there's almost no job that I need to do on here where the runway is too short for the PC-12. Or sure. the cargo capacity is too high that it can't do it in one, maybe two runs. So it's just like, wow, PC-12 for the win because it is just fantastic. But uh, 
it's really great. So um, every day I get up, I think Lee does the same thing over a cup of morning coffee. I get in here, I dispatch flights, I check things, I repair planes when my pilots have hard landings. Mm -hmm. Just go with that. Uh, in the evenings, if I'm free and not on baby duty, maybe I pick up one of the shorter routes. I uh, I kind of reserve one of the aircraft to be the boss's plane. I actually labeled that. Did you, uh, you, you know the registry? Oh you yeah, change yeah. It. yeah. I have one. It's labeled the boss. That's mine. <laughs> nice. I I don't have that, but uh, I do have a plane that just kind of sits there. It, one of the things I want to wait. You mean get in there? The, the Airbus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got two. I have two then. <laughs> so, but it's... I want to get in there a little bit more and learn those commodities trading and uh, and all that kind of stuff. So I'm not sure how that works. I've I've done about six or seven flights myself. Uh, including nice. one where I had to reposition to pick up a load and then do the load. So good, um, good stuff. You know, that's what's cool about this is there's like so many layers that you can play. It. You can just do true. cargo. You could just do passenger. You can do cargo and passenger. Um, Cause you know, the cargo is manager. more like a pickup thing uh, where yeah. passenger can be pickup or you actually create routes and manage an ongoing. And then there's this uh, commodities trading where you can actually have factories and be peddling your own wares. I mean, the layers of depth that you can go to this is fantastic. If you never wanted to fly a single route yourself, you wouldn't have to. If you wanted to fly every route yourself, I hope you have more okay. free time than I do. You could do it. So it's just a very versatile sim. I'm I'm digging it. All right, I'm done rambling. I got it out. I I've, I've been saving that up. <laughs> well, well, I tell you what, why don't you continue and you talk about the video? Again, this is the uh recorded on the 24th, guys. It's Wednesday. Tim has released a video. Oh, that's right. Uh, this morning we dropped a Fly J Sim 727 versus 737 200 Classic. Uh, kind of a, you mm -hmm. know, which one should you buy? And, and the reason I came up with this is A, I, I have both of them. And B, I see on the forums, especially around sale time, people are like, I got 50 bucks. Which one should I buy? Which one should I right. buy? And so um, rather than typing out the answer, only to have to repeat the question to someone else later. I made this video and it was fun because I just I had a lot of good B-roll and it was just fun to play with them. So go check it out. That's on uh, YouTube. Well, well, this channel that you're listening to us on here on this on Flight <laughs> Brothers, not on FS Elite. That's what I'm bumbling around. But uh, both high quality it's, aircraft. It's kind of hard to forget or to remember that sometimes, right? Because I talk like we're not on YouTube, but they're going to be listening to us on YouTube anyway. Yeah, like, where are we and who are we doing this for? This is for us. Okay. All we're, right. we're in a time and space. Well, the, the topic I am the absolute most excited about is next. Wait, or, hold or, on. Oh, Can, you've got one left. Do it. Yeah, I want to talk about this. So in podcast two, we had mentioned uh, Helleborn. Looking for any of you Helleborn pilots out there. And this was a, what would you call that? Kind of a third person shooter almost, but with helicopters, your, your external, it's not a yeah. sim, it's a game. Arcade style, arcade style, yeah. uh, chopper game, but the graphics are very, very appealing. Uh, what, what are all the boards that I know the early levels are Vietnam. Where yeah, else you, you have a Vietnam level one, you have a Vietnam and is it Africa is two. Level two. Oh, that's right. Yeah, there's some uh, there's some African sort of desert scenes. Kind of yeah. looks, looks like home have, for us. You have uh, what is it? Two in Afghanistan. Right. I call one flat Afghanistan because the other one is right. like so mountainous. I can't. <laughs> you don't have yeah, to worry about getting don't... shot down because you're constantly uh, sea fitting. <laughs> yeah. You. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You will find a mountain, and the larger the helicopter is, the sooner you'll find it. Um, it's and pave then, low uh, into the side of the canyons. <laughs> uh, remember that one I crashed like three times in a row with the uh, CH-53 and then the Chinook and it was just a bad day. And then the guns. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Are you still dead? You're like, yeah, I'm out of choppers. This is going to be yeah, three minutes before I can respawn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make a beer here and wait for the chopper to come back. Oh, um, crikey. But we, uh, oh, and then the uh, final one was, uh, what was it? Kosovo Day and a Kosovo Night Mission. Oh, and, and then there's one, that one there's an island. But, but oh, let's do the, the Kosovo. Yeah. Um, 
uh, Lee recorded some footage and it doesn't look that good for YouTube because it's a nightboard, but it, mm-hmm. to play the game, the gameplay, ooh, it's uh, kind of a dusk. I mean, it's not like pitch black, but right. I mean, it's so cool. Just the lighting, it is my favorite board by far. It, it's almost kind of relaxing and calm, you know, because you can just fly around. If you want to click on your uh, light amplification, night vision, you know, you can fly around that way, but you you, you get a, I don't know what the zoom level is, but you get a bit of zoom with that. So you give up that field of view, but it's peace, yeah, very cool. It's I don't know if it'll you get shot at. <laughs> Right until you get shot at. We may throw it on the channel at some point. I don't think in, uh, and of course this is just Tim and I recording this to share it with you guys. Uh, we have no skin in the game on it, or Helleborn doesn't either. But uh, we may put that up later. But we'd like to do something in uh, daylight and share that with you, so you can kind of see what what's going on and how Helleborn works. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah we, we can definitely do an overview for that because I think uh, if you're into flight sim, you'd probably dig Helleborn. It's a uh, it's it's relaxing. So if I don't know if you guys or gals, whatever, get this feeling where like you you sit down at your sim and you want to fly and you're like, nah, I need something a little more mindless. Mm-hmm. And this is perfect for that because you don't need to make a flight plan and run through checklists and briefing. It, you just like, let's just get in and go. And that's exactly how it is. And yeah, when you, you crash, can, you just respawn. That's right. And you can run pretty much the better part of a mission and the time it would take you probably to uh, get cold and dark and then taxi to a departure. Yeah, no, it's, it's great for that. Um, All right. I can't handle it anymore. We got to get onto this. Take it. So uh, did we mention in our last uh, podcast that we were working in with the beta on this or this is Um, news? No, I, I think we were talking with uh, Stefan, but okay. I don't think we had received anything yet. So uh, SSG had reached out to us. We had previously done a review of their um, 748 version 2, which at the time was just a passenger one. It was very controversial, but we were we were not hardliners about it. We kind of saw that like, hey, here's a product. It's kind of... You know, it's not 100% finished yet, but it's a great start, and it looks like it's going to go places. And a lot of people cut up on it, so since we were a little more fair with them, they felt they sought us out here on this beta. And so we've been flying their freighter for about a week. Uh, And the cool thing in that week, we've already gotten an update on the beta. I need to go download Mm -hmm. it. But um, we had found a bug in the FMC where it was just not letting us do one of the uh, stars. And uh, right. within 48 hours, they had gone in and fixed it. So I, I think that's a good sign. Like uh, earlier here, when we were talking about the Islander, like, oh, 40 bug fixes. This is the sign to me of a good developer. You know, they went, they, they do their beta testing. They try and tell you at product release, either this is fully cooked, this is half cooked, this is cooked enough, but we're going to keep working on it. You know, usually they mm-hmm. try and be pretty... Um, transparent about where the product is in its development and then they stay on it with the updates and so you know i'm okay with that if you get a developer who's really they're like we're just going to keep going with it well great so if you already own the uh 748 v2 i don't you can't even get that original v1 anymore can you that's gone no i think yeah i think it was pulled off when v2 launched uh you mentioned you'd been flying the freighter i don't think i've Flown the fla- freighter, excuse me, geez. Um, the I've been flying, yeah, <laughs> flying the freighter. So I, I've been flying the passenger version. Um, what two two flights? Okay. Um, so um, same plane, different range. The the freighter though has just been great. I feel like they've definitely done some cleaning up of the systems. The cockpit seems to be running smoother. Seems to be running better. The FMC, I didn't have any issues until Lee found that one quirk with the star, and then I went and replicated it, had the same quirk, and they fixed it, so no more problem. Yeah, um, there you go. Textures are great. You can walk the entire cargo bay. So for people who are like, there's not a full cabin in the passenger one, okay, I don't know if they're going to ever give you that or not, but uh, if you want to go run the full cargo bay, you can do it. It takes like five minutes, but you can walk the whole way. 
<laughs> I the first airport I spawned that thing at, I was beside mm-hmm. uh, an MD11 FedEx, and I was like, "Man, it looks like a toy beside the 748." I mean, 744s are big, right? This yikes! It is an enormous aircraft. Uh, so. And it's just really beautiful. If you zoom in, the textures hold up even to a, a fine level of detail. Um, handling wise, this is not an insult. It handles like a pig because it is one of what the five largest aircraft on the planet. I, I think they yeah. very accurately did it because um, I, I wasn't that some of the early on complaints like, oh, it handles like an F-16. That's stupid. And I never thought yeah. I never thought it at overperformed that much i think that was probably some foolish people who never looked at its wing size to realize it actually has stupid amounts of control authority at speed sure and they probably haven't uh, flown an f-16 because i can assure you that thing does not have the roll rate of an f-16 <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to do any corkscrews with it <laughs> right yeah um Oh, real quick. Uh, I want to interject something here, Tim. Do it. Because I was uh, listening to, I think, Podcast 2 a couple days ago, and you made the comment, sir. So I, I, I want to I straighten this out for any of our viewers who may or listeners who may have caught that one. But uh, we were talking about the cargo bay doors, I think, right. uh, being on the left-hand side. And there are no doors on the right side because they're not a thing. I want to go on record yeah, with everyone is. and and say there are on the right side, but they're the standard uh, underbelly cargo doors. So Tim misspoke in there, and uh, before somebody calls us out, uh, we, we got it. So we're clear on that. Right, right. Now, actually, what would be interesting is if any of you know, because I, I, I don't actually know for a fact. I know why passenger operations happen on one side and not the other and why in passenger you you do the baggage loading on the opposite side but for cargo ops i'm not actually clear why the upper deck cargo doors are only on the port side um Um, i've got a theory on that yeah you can't load both simultaneously all right sure if they're on the same side so um like when i'm at work and we're watching the uh Amazon and Kalita guys out there. Well, not the Kalita because they're in the 737, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, the Amazon guys, you know, you'll see them sh- kind of roll up and they're pushing stuff up to the upper deck from the left side and then they're stuffing other stuff in on the right side. Okay, so it just allows you to handle both decks simultaneously because you're not running into each other. Right. That's that would, your theory. That would be my guess. That seems like a good theory. I mean, that's it's just as simple as practical as why the sure. uh, passengers are on the left and the baggage is on the right. And it's for the same reason. <laughs> well, and you wouldn't have to re-engineer any doors on the, on the right side, right? Cause they're there on all variants. So, and, and in a lot of cases they're retrofitted or modded. Uh, exactly. Cause like those, oh, yeah. The converted freighters and stuff. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. How, what percentage of the cargo fleet is actually former passenger uh, conversion. Mm-hmm. So fascinating. A final point on this. Um, I didn't want to bring up specifically the liveries, but I did want to pass on to the people. We don't know what it's going to be at delivery, guys, for the um, version 2.2 when it comes out. We don't know the time frame. They're still working on it. Um, if they push it out early, people are going to complain. And if they don't tell people when it's going to come out, people are going to complain. So I don't blame SSG for just keeping their mouth shut about it. <laughs> yeah. um, it's ready but, when it's ready. Uh, Right, right. Yeah, it'll be out when it's ready. So we have received, um, as Tim had mentioned, beta 3 and now beta 4. And I will just share what came out if this eventually makes it to the market or whatever for you guys. Um, I counted eight freighter liveries and six intercontinental liveries. So significantly more than when uh, V2 dropped. If you'll remember, it was just the SSG house and Lufthansa. So their uh, livery artist is at work. And uh, there looks to be more on the horizon for that. Right. Well, and uh, if you ever go on the X-Plane forum, it's their person who does them. But there's a boatload. I I believe there was a day when you and I were both on there just 
gobbling up seven, four, eight liveries left and right mm-hmm. because uh, everything you could possibly dream of had made it on there. Well, hey, before we uh, before we run out the clock, um, yeah, we recently had that flash sale, and you mm-hmm. and I have both picked up a couple of new toys, which will undoubtedly find their way into some videos. So, w- what sure. kind of goodies did you pick up? Well, I picked up the uh, Challenger for X Plane Eleven. The uh, excuse me, the uh, Challenger Three Hundred. Really been enjoying that. Incorporated into uh, Air Hauler, flown it a few times. And I used my store credit, for lack of a better word, and picked up the F-33A uh, Bonanza from Carinado. So those were those were my two purchases. And I kind of went off on a little scenery tangent and um, went back to verticalsims.com. Uh, they uh, had some ortho from them for Florida and I think my MCP Zebo autopilot what you need to know video. Ooh, remember that, and, man. What's that? I remember that one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I picked up um, Arizona and Indiana and I think Georgia. They have a big, per- uh, you know, a very large percentage of the continental U.S. Are these so payware or freeware? They're free. Nice. Yeah, they're free. You just go. I don't know the Zoom level. I know there's probably going to be nerds among us that are going to ask. I, I don't know. Um, it looks good from five, 6,000 feet in an airliner. Uh, it's free. I think Arizona was about 50 to 60 gig. So, uh, I mean, it's a big state, but it's reasonable zoom level. Um, it's a big state, but everything's good. tan. So I don't know why it should take up that much space. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. Grand Canyon looks nice. That's probably half of it. So, um, Every shade yeah, man, of that's, beige. that's, that's what I've been up to over the last month or so. All right. Well, my my list kind of snuck in in our earlier topics, but I picked up the Rotate MD80. Definitely expect some content there. I picked up SSG's Embraer uh, E-Jets, which is, I believe, the Embraer 170 and the 195. Um, Mm -hmm. I I got a little bit of love and hate with that. There's quite a few things I love about them. There's a few things that it's like, seriously? And so I, I need to check. They might just be a slightly older product, but... Uh, maybe now is they're... this um, is this an Embraer thing or is it just no? The, it's uh, like the... there's things I mean... the developer did that are absolutely awesome, and I'm like sweet. And then there's mm-hmm. things that make you go seriously mm-hmm. on payware. Uh, and I, I think it's just an older product. That's my my guess. But it's a weird huh. juxtaposition between super high quality things and super. Was this made in paint? looking things <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> wait okay. wait till you see um the uh the front engine blades it's um it's gonna blow your mind and not in a good way <laughs> nice <laughs> all right so i also picked up so we have embraers the embraer uh 110 bondurant i'm trying to remember what developer made that so i'm sorry if you're the developer that i can't remember but um you're going to definitely get a video on that. Maybe just a first look. Cause it's, it's a cool plane. It's a lot of fun. They did a couple nifty little features I've never seen before. Like for example, you know how, when you do the walk around, a lot of aircraft have a, a thing you do that just pulls all the uh, pedo covers, chocks, everything for you. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's dream foil, by the way, the dream foil made the Embraer. Okay. So yep. on the 110 Bondurant, you actually can click on each chalk, each remove before flight separately to do it. Hmm. So then the walk around starts to actually feel like a walk around. You can click on the fueling caps and your pop up menu comes up for like fueling. So it's just a different take on how to do that ground equipment. And so rather than it just being, hey, look, here's a little here's a little dog bone. Here's a, here's some ground equipment. Like they've actually sure. incorporated into part of the procedure. I'm like, Oh, I'm kind of digging this. That's nice. So, uh, interesting aircraft. It doesn't hold a real huge place in the history of aviation other than being one of Embraer's first, uh, real successful products, but, uh, it's a cool plane. Uh, also weren't you, sorry. Oh, sorry. Right. Go for it. Uh, weren't you telling me something about it and a, 
pressurized or unpressurized variant? Oh, yeah. So uh, the first Embraer that actually looks like Embraer to me is the Brasilia. And the okay. Embraer Brasilia, if, if you're only familiar with like the Embraer 135, 140, 145, picture one of those, shorten it up, make it a turboprop, put the wings in the middle. Mm -hmm. That's a Brasilia. It's got the same nose. Uh, the Bondurant kind of looks like a Brasilia but the the windscreen is different the nose cone is different and i don't believe it's pressurized uh, i haven't found any pressurization systems inside yet and uh so I, I don't think it's pressurized i think the brasilia might have been the pressurized next generation aircraft but i could be wrong if you happen to know if the bondurant is pressurized please correct me in the comments because i'm i didn't see anything in the documentation or or online and it's certainly got it's a beefy enough aircraft. It could be pressurized, but I don't think it is. So uh, my last purchase, because we're, we're at the, about the time we like to wrap this up, is the uh, Carinado Bonanza, which uh, this is the V-tail Bonanza, the V-35 Bravo, which I believe they originally made for uh, X-Plane 10 and just kind of ported it over. It has had a couple little quirks because of that. There's a few things that I don't love how they run on the panel. And of all things... The starter didn't work. You could not start the aircraft. Mm. X-Plane could not start the aircraft. Fortunately, thank you, nerds. I love all of you. You already figured it out for me. I just Googled, you know, can't start X-Plane Carinado Bonanza. And uh, the starter coefficient or whatever needed changed in the profile. So I did what they said. You just edit the file, open it up in text, change the number from like 0.5 to like 1.5 or something like that. And then... To more. Yeah. <laughs> more power. And right. uh, boom. plus key. Right. Turns over every time without fail. It was actually funny. It was kind of an experience like when your car battery dies. It just gets like mm -hmm. some clicking. It's not going to happen. So uh, so that was that. And uh, if I've never mentioned it, that was a plane. I might have mentioned it in this podcast. Uh, that was a plane that was in my family at some point. So this was like super nostalgic uh, to get it. And uh, over Father's Day, I took my dad up in it. Uh, here on the sim he flew it for the first time he's never flown a sim he rode in that bonanza constantly as a child through the 70s told me a lot of great stories but this was his first sim flight in anything ever and uh just just to wrap up my story it ended sadly with a gear up <laughs> landing because me I was gonna ask how it went yeah he did great until the end he was doing a, a fairly decent for a first approach ever i'm gonna say it was gold um okay I forgot to put the gear down. I'm such a fool. So, you know, it gets down and it was, it was a, kind of a hard landing anyway, but like the engine died and we're sliding and I'm like, what's go? Oh no. <laughs> mm -mm. So, uh, yeah, that one was my fault. Instructor fail. Oops. I take it. It didn't have a gear horn on it. huh? Okay. It does, but it only activates when you completely retard the, uh, throttle. And because on approach, we had done that substantially farther out. I had already uh -huh. canceled the horn rather than listening to it the whole time. So, uh, gotcha. yep. Fail, fail, fail. The Swiss cheese lined up and we scooted in on our belly. There you go. All right. So is that it? Are we, are we, are we at the end? Um, yeah, I think so. Don't forget to uh, leave your comments, questions, people, ladies, gentlemen, to anything we've talked about in the comment section below um any final plugs tim um go go check out uh the any builds video over there on fselite.net check out our video there right of course uh check out the fly j sim that tim put up there for you guys uh, a little earlier this week as you listen to it perfect so um so even though we're out of time we've absolutely not run out of things to talk about and if there's something you want to hear more about that's what the comments are for so stick it down below and we'll get back to you so until next time i'm tim and i'm lee so remember plan the flight and fly the plan